Interventions with a King. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack, Cardiovascular Interventions. Hi, I'm David Moliterno, Chief of Cardiovascular Medicine at the University of Kentucky and also an Associate Editor for Jack Cardiovascular Interventions. Today I'm joined by David Kanzari, who's the Director of Interventional Cardiology and the Chief Science Officer for Piedmont Healthcare in Atlanta. And David, we're going to talk about uh, a paper you have coming out in a journal quite soon, uh, talking about the Endeavor 3 study, some quite long-term outcome from uh, another uh, head-to-head comparison of two drug-looting stents. So tell us a little bit about your findings. That's right, David. Endeavor 3 was actually the first randomized comparison of what we term a second-generation stent, the Endeavor stent, versus a first-generation stent, the Cypher stent. The study was a trial of about 440 patients that were randomized three to one to the Endeavor stent versus the Cypher stent and intended initially as an angiographic trial evaluating late loss. The study did not meet its endpoint showing significantly higher late loss with the Endeavor stent compared with the Cypher stent. But as you know well, for all key DES registration trials, we have a commitment to following these patients out through five years. And this manuscript provides some interesting late-term insights to the long-term follow-up of patients included in DES trials. So it wasn't powered for these long-term outcome, but you observed lower mortality, uh, lower infarctions, things like that. Is that right? That's exactly right. So the sample size and trial design uh, limitations notwithstanding, What we've recognized in this trial is that through long-term follow-up, although against the background of a high rate of angiographic follow-up, although target lesion revascularization, at least numerically, was higher for the Endeavor stent, over late-term follow-up, in some instances, some of these differences become less disparate or more muted. And interestingly, over late-term follow-up, we see perhaps higher adverse events in this trial with the Cypher cohort, such that through five years of follow-up, major adverse cardiac events and cardiac death and MI were significantly greater, if not tended to be greater, for the Cypher cohort. And on the other hand, the differences in target lesion revascularization were less, such that there was more of a plateauing with Endeavor and a slight incremental increase with the Cypher stent. So do you you think this is a play of chance, though? I'm really trying to get at you here because we'd assume most activity from the stent is done in the first year or so. Now we see these late events accumulating, unfortunately, in the serolimus eluding stent group, making the zotorolimus stent look, you know, progressively better. I, I think there are some themes here, though, that maybe suggest less of a play of chance. One thing is there's a consistency across the Endeavor program for more of a leveling of late target lesion revascularization supposing perhaps that the stent maybe takes on more of a bare metal stent phenotype. But on the other hand, we've seen in the ISAR trials, in the in the SIRTEX trial as well, what's been termed a late catch-up or a late loss drift with this progression of, of, of late lumen loss or erosion of the minimal luminal diameter with drug-eluting stents clearly still preserving the benefit over a bare metal stent, but perhaps suggesting that that there is this progression and over late term follow-up, maybe the differences that we observe early uh, are not so fixed or stagnant and that they do, that, that, that differences continue, and events continue to accrue. Yeah, I, I, can, I can accept that, I guess, uh, but if, even if we were to say this was up against a bare metal stent, you know, usually we don't see DES or BMS changing death, myocardial infarction, and certainly not late. These things at least look to be on on par with each other over time, so I'm not sure why there would be a difference between two drug-eluting stents. Well, that's true, um, except to say that we have observed, I mean, first of all, we should recognize that uh, that life does not stop at the time of endpoint ascertainment at sure. 9 or 12 months. And just as in real-world clinical practice, events continue to accrue over late term. And it's highlighted by the late-term follow-up of these trials. We have seen, for instance, other studies showing differences in drug-eluting stents in cardiac death and myocardial infarction driven by differences in very late stent thrombosis. So this is one of the benefits of the late-term dedicated follow-up at a, at a very specific patient level. Good. Two, two quick questions. One is, should this influence practice? In, in general, um, I, what I would say is that the outcomes for both drug-eluting stents are quite favorable. So I think that's reassuring for the selection of either drug-eluting stent. But I think there is some consistency in the safety of the Endeavor program in selected patients where perhaps antiplatelet therapy compliance may be of concern. What, and then the last one is what's next? Where should we go next? Uh, should we do six-year Endeavor 3 or should we try to start another study? What would you do next? Yeah, and we ask ourselves oftentimes, do we publish the six-year results, the seven-year results, and when do we stop? 
I think by five years we have a good insight into the uh, physiologic and clinical behavior of these drug eluting stents. Really the next steps, as you know well, are moving on to bioresorbable polymeric stents, stents that are bioresorbable altogether. But as you know also very well, the outcomes with drug eluting stents that we have available to us today are so favorable that the opportunity to demonstrate significant benefit or superiority with these new designs that seem very intuitive, it's going to be very challenging. I agree. A challenge it is. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, David Kanzari here and David Moliterno signing off. Thanks again. Thank you.